Words matter. Words are full of meaning. And without question, the idea of just hearing some basic level philosophy around investment is critical. It's changed my world. Certain words that have come into my life have changed the way I've lived my life. Welcome to the Urban Property Investor. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. Today's show is all about knowledge. Yes, we're going to invest our time into philosophy. Today, we're going to crack some serious codes. In fact, all podcasts we do, we crack some codes. So welcome back, you crazy urban property investors. You know the rules. Play the program in double speed. Get your life back. But I tell you what, I think it's critically important to stop and learn from people that have more experience when it comes to a subject matter. Knowledge is really, really critical. And for me, one of the best ways to learn about things is to understand philosophy, key ways to hear information. In my view, uh, words matter. Words are full of meaning. And without question, the idea of just hearing some basic level philosophy around investment is critical. It's changed my world. Certain words that have come into my life have changed the way I've lived my life. Now, there's some great philosophers that have graced the world. You could go all the way back to Plato, Aristotle, dudes running around in togas, talking wisdom, And today, of course, if you want to hear from some of the best philosophers of the world, you know, you can go and buy a one-day course or a two-day course and just hear from great people. Wisdom is important. You know, when it comes to property investment, it is a hard road to success. There are a lot of pitfalls along the way. Buying a property in 2023 and waking up in 2043 with the results of your hold period as an investor is going to take a lot of grit. It's also going to take a lot of belief. And of course, if you don't believe, there's going to be a crossroad point where you maybe cheat yourself out of a big opportunity to become financially free. People property invest not for real estate. People property invest so that they can lead the life they want. They can leave a legacy. They can pass on wealth to their children. They can perhaps stop doing something they hate. Most people wake up every day and do a job they do not like. Philosophy has been a key part of my world. I've been able to replace my income from real estate. I could retire tomorrow if I chose to. I choose not to. But along the way, I've learned to control my emotions because real estate is an emotional sport. We often say real estate is 80% psychology, 20% real estate. And it very much is the case. The reason is... Human beings are 100% emotional. We're emotional in everything we do. We're emotional in how we think, in how we feel, in what we say. Our thoughts determine our emotions. And really the idea of money is money loves order. So if emotionally we bring chaos our way into the world, money will never find us. And of course, chaos repels money. So when people don't have their emotional state in checked balance, they don't attract wealth. It's just the law of the universe. It's just the way it works. Think about someone who is completely chaotic and has so many dysfunctions you can imagine. They probably have not created wealth for themselves. They have probably 
not attracted money for themselves. In fact, quite often you find the most disorderly people in society come from a wealthy background but have never attracted money themselves. Money's been gifted to them. And they can quite often put themselves in a position where they end up suffering things like drug abuse and uh, many other disorders. So the law of control is important. Money loves order. And order, in my view, comes from the understanding of knowledge. See, we all go through the world and we all encounter problems. When we encounter problems... They can either be normal problems or abnormal problems. Really, the only differential is knowledge. If you put two property investors in a room with the same problem, one with the knowledge of experiencing that problem, one with the knowledge without experiencing the problem, you'll have two different emotional reactions. I've seen over the years people become truly emotional about real estate and of course cheat themselves out of wealth creation, out of retiring early. I've had perfectly good properties be tossed out the window because people can't control their emotional well-being. I always say this, and this is a key piece of philosophy from a a guy that, uh, you know, just brushed his teeth with sunscreen. People are not reliable. Property is reliable. Property is reliable. People are not. In other words, buy the property and learn to leave it alone. There are four universal laws when it comes to the idea of of philosophy. The law of control, the law of cause and effect, the law of belief, the law of decision. I'll say it again because these are powerful words. The law of control, what you can control, how you can control your state, how you can look after yourself. The law of cause and effect, what we put in, the top of the funnel comes out, the bottom of the funnel. The law of belief, and the law of decision. If you don't believe in what you're doing, if you don't even know why you're doing it, you will encounter an emotional problem one day. If I asked you, do you know your property strategy? Can you actually answer that question? The law of decision is even more important. Quite often we need to make very difficult decisions as a property investor. Sometimes that decision is actually making a decision. So we're going to go over some key pieces of philosophy, which I think are critical, very important, and of course, pieces of philosophy which has changed my world. And sometimes I think we've just got to stop being soft on ourselves. Too often, people do not push themselves. They're not disgusted with where they are in life. They don't take a reality check pill when it comes to where they financially sit in the world. They hide. They avoid. They do not do. And of course, one of the most powerful emotions that you can ever think of is disgust. Disgust is almost like shame. And again, uh, for me, one of the things I learned early on was to deal with shame. I grew up in a radioactive dump. I'm Chernobyl boy. And I had money shame from an early, early point in my life. It was probably the best gift I could ever have because I knew that I had to remove that feeling of self-disgust and stop being soft on myself to end up in a financial situation. Over the last 30 years, I've been involved in real estate. I've been investing for 25 of those years. I'm now financially free. I still work, I still podcast, but I am financially free. I could call it quits tomorrow. So emotions are important 
when I first learned that emotions control the way you create order in your life and order equals money, it changed the way I looked at the world. So let's have the discussion, the discussion of philosophy. Remember, there are four laws of the universe, law of control, cause and effect, belief and decision. And these are just things that I believe you need to deal with as a property investor to get to the other side. Otherwise, you're Googling stuff, you're trying to, you're trying to, you know, flip things, you just, you know, do you know your strategy? So the first piece of philosophy, truer abilities are revealed in difficult times. You know, uh, it's so true that we often really find out the most about ourselves when things get tough, you know. And again, like I think it's critical to understand that when things get tough, we can simply find out more about what we know, how we react to things, and we can learn from that. And we've got to learn that things are going to be tough. Real estate is a tough business. Uh, it's not as simple as just buying a property. In fact, most people don't become property investors. Most people, by the way, are headed to a train wreck when it comes to their financial freedom when it comes to retirement. The average person in Australia is not a property investor. The average person in Australia uh, is now a renter. You know, there are more renters being produced than you can imagine. And of course, home ownership is getting tougher and tougher and tougher. A lot of homeowners are asset rich and cash poor. They can't retire. They can't get off the rat wheel. So true abilities are revealed in difficult times. And of course, for many people, they find out their true ability too late in life, their true self financial situation. Now, right now, we're going through things which are, uh, you know, difficult. Interest rates going up. It's not easy. It's difficult. Um, for many property investors, they'll probably start to shiver in their boots around this difficult period. Again, a lot of property investors don't end up owning real estate for 20 plus years. I mean, a lot of people buy a property and own it for four, five, six years and then decide that it's all too much. So difficult times will reveal a lot about you, about how you feel about the world and about your emotional state. And again, like property is reliable, just leave that bit alone, work on you, how you are going to have a relationship with money, with interest rates, how you're going to have a relationship with yourself during, for example, the period of inflation. So we are now living in a new world where money is different. How does what does that reveal about you? Are you overspending? Are you uh, a bit crazy with your money? What do you do with the situation which has revealed itself? The next piece of philosophy, if you like, is really all you can do is work on the now. You know, the past is gone, the future, who knows what's going to happen. Really, all we have is the present. And really, it pertains to a universal law being the law of belief. Like, if you do not under, uh, you know, if you, if you do not work on where you are right now and you think about the past constantly, oh, I missed the boat, I should have got into the market, um, you know, why didn't I act? Then you're just going to put yourself in a miserable emotional state. All we have is really the now. Uh, make the most of the now. Go to the movie. Go to the play. Go to the cricket. Enjoy your life. Invest today. All we have is really where we are today. The past is gone. The future may, we may not see. All we have is the present. And it's a very hard thing to do 
to live in the present. A lot of people live very anxious. They live in the future. A lot of people live in a depressed state. They live in the past. Being present is critical to being a property investor. Understanding what you can achieve today as a property investor is a powerful piece of information. You know, just uh, over the, the last few weeks leading up to today, I've been working on a property, getting its rent up. It's gone from 380 per week to 540 per week. I've used some lease strategies with furnishing. Now, again, every single day I was working on the present and today the actual gift, the present I am receiving is $540 a week instead of $380. That's $160 more than I was getting two months ago for the same piece of real estate. Why? Because I wasn't living in the past I wasn't living in the future, I was living in the now, the present. Another word for present is gift. I got the gift of money. Why? Because I worked on order. Money loves order. The order I worked on was making my property better to receive the gift, the gift of money. Money does not like chaos. And I can tell you that the same property, my next door neighbor could be doing the same thing. I even know they're a property investor. They're not doing it because they're not present. They're living in the past. They're just not playing the game that is the, uh, the game of real estate investment. It is work. You have to do the work, which is really the next key principle to this whole thing thing around real estate you need to devote time to making progress did you see the time i just devoted i put the work in in the present to get the outcome and the gift i devoted time to making progress really it is a critical part of the puzzle what can you do today in the present devoting your time to financial freedom can you ring the bank? It's a 30-second phone call and say, hey, you want a lower interest rate? A lot of my clients have been doing this. I've been seeing the results. Everyone's getting lower interest rates. Uh, we have a little uh, Facebook group, you know, and people posting, yeah, I just rang NAB, got half a percent off. All that 30-second phone call, hundreds of dollars a month saved, devoting time to making progress the law of cause and effect. You put something at the top of the funnel, it comes out at the bottom of the funnel. Devote time to making progress. If you're not devoting time to your property portfolio, you're probably not making progress. This, uh, this year and, and last year alone, or let's say the last six months, I've been working on pushing rents. I've pushed rents up on all of my pieces of real estate that are not in lease or where the lease is running out of, uh, out of time. So make progress, ring the bank, uh, organize yourself, devote time to this thing. Because uh, again, property is reliable, people are not reliable, and of course do not devote enough time to making progress. Real estate success is the little one percenters. One percenters over time add up to success. Think about all the great sportsman stories that you hear. You know, basketballers in the NBA, all very talented. However, one person stands out from the crowd. They get up earlier, they work harder, they put in the one percent more to their training and guess what they become the best in their class in their sport and again like if you're not devoting time to create order in your world you're just creating chaos and money does not like chaos so 
Devote time to making progress because it is critical. Remember, life is not short. We just waste a lot of time. And again, for Australians, you know, we live a long life. People are living 85, 95 years of age. That's a long period of time. We just waste a lot of it. We don't spend enough time doing things which are sensible, which are prudent, which are going to put you in a position to succeed. A lot of us, for example, at nighttime do nothing. You know, just kick back, put the feet up on the sofa, watch TV for four hours. What a waste of time. Sure, every now and then, watch a show, have a laugh. But I can tell you that people who value time and don't waste time end up creating more order and more order creates more money. Life is not short. When we say life is short, we are just basically not being disgusted with our own appreciation of time that we waste a lot of time. Be disgusted with stuff. Like, get angry. Like, you know, certainly those lockdowns piss me off no no end. What a waste of time. Life is short. We just waste a lot of time. And I can assure you that uh, I've certainly had a reality check on that one, that every single moment that I'm going around this world, I'm learning stuff, I'm hearing from information, and I am not going to waste time. I'm going to use every moment to connect with friends, to make better relationships, to be happy, to laugh to build more wealth, to encourage more people. We just waste a lot of time. The truth is most things that make us anxious never in fact happen. Universal law of control. People get worried about all sorts of shit and it never happens. What they worry about never comes to fruition. I was at a party the other week. I didn't even know this is a thing. Some lady there at the party, she was anxious about chickens. Like, she basically is scared of chickens and thinks they're going to, like, peck her to death. I didn't know this was a thing. There's actually a phobia of people who are, like, arachnophobia like spiders. But I don't know what it is exactly, but it's a phobia of chickens. It's real. Now... When was the last time a chicken ate ate a human being? I I don't know. I don't know if a live human being has ever been eaten by a chicken. I don't think it's happened. Most things that make us anxious never in fact happen. And again, people are 100% emotional about their decision making. And quite often that's even the lack of making a decision because of anxiety on stuff that's never going to happen to you. So this is really the idea of law of control. Some people really love being in control of everything in their mind. They're control freaks sometimes. And again, they're very anxious about something that's never going to happen, so they create a control mechanism in their mind to go the opposite direction. The law of control, it is an emotional crippler sometimes. So again, like most things that make us anxious never in fact happen. So just get over yourself. It's just you thinking about some weird stuff. I have it all the time. Like people are like, well, you know, the property market's going to crash 50%. When was the last time that happened? So everyone's going to live on the street, are they? Most things that make us anxious never, in fact, happen. So move on with your world. It's so true. It's such a key piece of philosophy. Do you see why philosophy is so important to being a property investor? I personally think it's one of the reasons I've been able to reach financial freedom is because words matter to me. Yeah, I'm a you know disgruntled writer. I've written books. I love words. I love 
the idea that words can change your life. So philosophy for me is something that really, really resonates. It may not resonate with you. I don't know. But there are some intelligent people that we can learn from when it comes to succeeding in life. You know, don't change your investment goals just because the markets are volatile. This is an incredible, incredible piece of philosophy, the law of cause and effect. If you change what you're aiming for, you will hit something completely different. Now, for most people that I work with, they have a number, a, a piece of maths, which is important to them. Financial freedom is a mathematical equation. A lot of people I coach want $100,000 passive income in retirement every single year to get where they want to go in their life. If you change your time horizon or you change how much property you put in to, uh, to the funnel, you're going to change the result at the end. And of course, just because markets are volatile doesn't mean you change your investment goals. It doesn't mean you retreat. It doesn't mean you stop buying. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you need to be more diligent. Don't change your investment goals just because the market's volatile. Imagine we sit here for 10 years where interest rates are five and a half, six, six and a half percent and you don't invest because you think that's expensive. The law of cause and effect will unfold and guess what? You will join the hundreds of thousands, the millions of other people who have no financial freedom later in life. Most people are headed to the pension. Changing your investment goals just because markets are going up or down makes no sense. It is just playing the long game. Real estate is the long game. It is not a short game. That's the beauty of real estate. If you want a short game, do something that's short. Go short the stock market. Go play in crypto. That's the short game. The reason people property invest is it's a long game so you can invest in both good and bad markets after contraction comes expansion after expansion comes contraction it's just the way it works the same wind blows on us all the wind of opportunity the wind of disaster just deal with it and move on with your life People are 100% emotional. M news, information makes people volatile. Quite often when we analyze volatility, it is from the human side, not so much from the market. Being comfortable is dangerous. And it is so true. So many people feel comfortable and don't push themselves out of their comfort zone. You know, it's so uh, often seen with, you know, just health, basic level health. People don't walk enough. They don't move enough. They don't eat the right food. They feel comfortable. But actually, they're in a dangerous position. So many Australians are financially in a dangerous position because they're comfortable. And again, this really does link to knowing your numbers. Like... You perhaps have bought your own home. Awesome. Congratulations. How's that going to help you get to your financial freedom? It's going to help you a little bit. Uh, perhaps you bought one property. It's throwing out $20,000 passive income. Okay, that's great. But is that going to allow you to financially retire? Uh, probably not. Because... A lot of people put themselves in a comfortable position. Oh, yeah, I've got one investment. They're actually in a dangerous position because they haven't actually done the work to get the result. They haven't put enough at the top of the funnel to come out the bottom of the funnel. I know a lot of people, I have even friends like this, work colleagues that uh, I used to work with like this. 
uh, they earn hundreds of thousands of dollars, $300,000 a year, a huge amount of money, never invested. They're pushing into their 40s. Uh, they're pushing into their 50s. Being comfortable is dangerous. They earn a huge amount of money. They don't invest because they're comfortable. Oh, my wage is so good that uh, I don't need danger. And again, like getting outside your comfort zone is where the real work is done. Really, this from a universal law is the law of decision. If you choose to be comfortable, you're probably going to pay the penalty for that later in life. You know, have a hard life when you're young, have an easy life when you're old. Have a easy life when you're young, have a much harder life when you're old. And again, a lot of young people are comfortable. It's a very dangerous thing. Move out of your country comfort zone. Remember the power of asking. Asking is critical to this whole thing. I've done a podcast on the power of asking. Uh, it even repeated during the Christmas period when I was relaxing with strange Norfolkian people on the weird island of Norfolk. The power of asking, the law of reciprocity. Once I asked for a million dollars, I didn't have a million dollars. I needed a million dollars. I went to a billionaire's office, told him my idea, said I needed a million dollars. Guess what happened? He gave me a million dollars. The law of asking, the power of asking, the law of cause and effect. You ask, you will receive. People are not mind readers. People don't know everything. There are more mentees than mentors. If you want someone to show you the way, you need to ask. The power of asking. People are not going to come to you. You have to go to them. So remember, it is a very, very, very powerful law of the universe, the law of cause and effect, the power of asking. Be ready. It's the way of the world. What good is an opportunity if you can't take advantage of it? You know, opportunity comes in so many forms. And if you're not ready, what good is it? So many people just don't do the one percenters to get themselves ready. So when the opportunity comes along, they can reach out and grab it. Too many people let opportunity pass them by because they're not ready. Oh, I wish I could have bought that. Well, you could have. You just weren't ready. Get ready. I wish I made that capital growth. I wish I was in the market then. You could have been. You just weren't ready. Good opportunities don't wait for people who are in chaos. Money does not follow chaos. If you're not ready, you're not going to get the opportunity. So be ready. The law of cause and effect unfolds on you if you don't put yourself in a position to catch that opportunity. Know your horizons. Know your time horizon. Really, the idea of property investment is a mathematical equation. If you know your horizon, you can distill it to a mathematical equation. Quite often when we set goals in the, the, the world, we forget to use maths. Any goal that you set has to have a formula. You can't say, I want to lose weight. That's not going to uh, be a goal with uh, a real outcome. You have to say, for example, in two years, maths two, every single day I'm going to eat 500 kilojoules and in two years I will have dropped 10 kilos. 
do you see the difference instead of losing weight, you're putting a mathematical framework? You need to know your time horizons if you're a property investor. The law of cause and effect. By 2032, I plan to have four property investments spitting out $75,000 in rent, which is my passive income plan for when I retire in 2050. Mathematics. It is a financial responsibility for anyone investing to uh, use it. Know your horizon. Know your time horizon. What are you? How long are you doing this for? It is the law of cause and effect. Get used to bad news. The law of control. Like bad news is going to come every day. Uh, if it bleeds, it leads in the media. So again, if you let the media control your emotional well-being, it's probably not a good probably not great odds of you getting to the end game, which is financial freedom. The media quite often are like, you know, anti-property investment, uh, uh, anti-marketplace. They're basically doomsdayers. So again, like turn down the noise. I've mentioned this in so many podcasts. To be a successful property investor, you've got to turn down the noise. Uh, listen to people that are going to help you financially reach your time horizons, not information which is going to separate you from your time horizon of financial freedom. The law of reciprocity unfolds if you dig into bad news. Don't take bad news and post it like You are just letting your emotional state control you, the law of control. Don't take a news feed from, uh, you know, a journalist who's not in the real estate economy and go, ah, Brisbane's going to crash by 5%, post it. Why are you doing that? Why do you want that in your world that is a place where you should remove yourself from because you will bring just energy which is uh, almost energy sapping and wasting your life on dumb stuff so just move past it in real estate there's going to be good news there's going to be bad news it's really irrelevant if you know your time horizons stick to a financial framework Again, if I asked you, do you know your strategy, can you actually answer that? You know, quite often the, the concept of a financial framework is completely misunderstood. How much are you saving from your wage every single week? What do you put away to add to income producing assets every single week? What is your income from your assets actually doing next? Are you taking money, putting in an offset account? Do you actually have a financial framework? Do you know every single day what you're going to do financially that day? If you don't, the law of cause and effect is going to catch up with you. And then again, because human beings are 100% emotional, it will control your emotional world. You will start to question where you are financially Because you do not have a financial framework, a model to get where you need to go. Models are important. I use models all the time. I've developed so many models that I use financially to navigate through the real estate marketplace. It really is my own world of information. I use the urban behavioral economy. I use the Forex growth plan, the 13 cash flow strategies. I've got 25 models I use inside the real estate market as a financial framework. And it is something that I've developed for other people because it's worked for me, the law of cause and effect. Financially, I've got myself to a position of retirement. 
I'm 47 years of age. I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty good outcome. How did I do it? Financial frameworks. Stick to financial frameworks. And you will start to get to where you need to go in this world. And probably the most important lesson I've ever learned is profits are better than wages. You cannot save yourself wealthy when it comes to your job, basically creating a financial outcome for you. If you learn that you can take your wage and replace it with a new income source, it will change your world. Profits are better than wages. The first time I learned this, it blew my mind, changed my world. And really, if I look at my world, the first decade of my economic life broke, learned from Jim Rowan, profits are better than wages, blew my mind, blew my mind. That you can take money that you earn and multiply it. You can make a profit from money. You put it into this sausage factory machine called real estate and it spits out more money. You take the money from your wage, you put it in real estate, it spits out rent, you take that rent, you uh, invest that rent. You know, today I own real estate which is uh, debt-free. I take the money uh, from my wage, I take the money from real estate which is debt-free, I use the money from the rent, I can buy shares. I can shares then pay a dividend. All of a sudden, there's income buckets coming into my world. You need several income buckets that uh, flow. You need different ways for money to go into that income bucket. Think about it. Most people's source of income is one thing, their wage. They are mandatory involved in super, but that's it. If you've got an invested portfolio, you've got money from real estate, superannuation, your wage, you may have money from joint ventures, you may have money from syndications, you may have money from the share market. All of a sudden, profits are better than wages, the law of decision. So guys, make sure you start to really focus in on this thing called real estate because it ain't getting easier. You've just got to get better. That's the way of the world. That's the law of the jungle. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time as we talk more real estate. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. And I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until we meet again on the next episode of the Urban Property Investor, take care and bye for now.